Hey, how's it going? Sarah, merhaba, nasılsınız? Merhaba, günaydın. Günaydın. How are you? Fine. You good? Uh -huh. Fine. Great, great. You? Çok iyiyim, çok iyiyim, ben de iyiyim. Teşekkürler. So, what have you done this morning? Can you tell it in Turkish? Ah, uh, no, unfortunately. My Turkish is too weak. I don't know any verbs, honestly. Uh, very, very few verbs. I can say like konuşuyorum and like, which is I speak, I think, right? I speak. Yeah. And then the other ones are mostly just questions. I can ask questions like ne zaman geliyor? <laughs> you know, like for a bus, otobus ne zaman geliyor? Uh, you know, we have you with dots and you without dots. Oh yeah, you would have that. Dots are u, like autobus. If autobus. It without, if it was without that, it would be autobus. Autobus. Evet, evet. Yeah, so I I was thinking of learning, you know, but I I don't have uh, time. T well, I have time actually, but honestly, like I can make time. The time is not the excuse, but I just need a good teacher. Like I need a uh, somebody who's there's a Turkish. American Association here in my city because yeah. Chicago has a large uh, population of Turkish people and we are only two hours from Chicago so there are still a lot of Turkish people here and they have classes but I have to investigate like what times they teach you know things like that mm -hmm. because uh, really if it's in my city then I have no excuse you know I should be able to go and attend the classes yeah um, when I first heard Turkish, honestly, Servet, I didn't think it was that romantic sounding a language. I thought it was more a more um, serious language. But then as I listened to songs, I started watching some old movies. Hababam uh, Sinefe. I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, super, super funny, right? Yeah. I can watch it 1,000 times more and I won't get bored. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So how about if it was like, I saw the application of the language in other ways, in other very creative ways, right? And I think after you after you investigate the literature of a country or the 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 comedy of a of a culture, you know, places like that or things like that, that's when you begin to appreciate more. So definitely, it was uh, those were some. Interesting things, and then I watched Muhteşem uh, Yüzyıl. Some of the shows that are kind of popular now, um, but I still they don't make uh, the Muhteşem Yüzyıl with uh, English subtitles, as far as I can tell. They make them with German subtitles, but not English. So it was a little bit difficult for me. Um, and then Fatih Bir Dört Eliyuc. Bin Dort Eliyuj was also um, uh, a good movie, just in terms of the historical stuff. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's overly it's overly dramatic, but what can we do? Right? Sometimes that's how movies are. So, yeah, it's great. It's great. So I will let you know, you know, Sarah, if I start learning Turkish at the Turkish American Center here. Yeah. Uh, maybe I can have a conversation with you. <laughs> yes, you know, we have a group on Facebook. I was also teaching their Turkish a few people as well. Uh -huh. Teaching, you can follow the group. And yeah, that would be that would be great. Join online class as well. What, what's the name of the group, if you don't mind me asking? It's called Language Exchange. Language Exchange. But I guess it is in Spanish. I guess. Uh huh. Uh, the link 
the link of the group is in Spanish. I need to find it. Okay. Because there might be a few different language exchange groups on Facebook, probably. Oh, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, are you friends with me on Facebook, Servet? You might not be. But if you if you add me on Facebook, then we can communicate that way. If you find the link, that would be. Oh, okay, it's right here. Cambio de idiomas. Oh, okay. That, this might be the best option for me then. That's awesome. Liliana, you know about it as well? That's great. Yes, yes uh, it's a good group. I like But as uh, Servant, you won't teach uh, Turkish anymore, do I? I'm not teaching for now. Uh, because also people have lots of different things to do. They are busy, one of them. Is People are, some of them are working, some of them are studying. Uh -huh. So yes, and, and it's the group. Christmas time now. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the group, a, like. Yes, you can. I, hi, Farhan. I'm sorry for not saying hi to oh, you. Oh, no problem, Zoyana. How's it going? Good to see you. <laughs> good to see you too. Yeah. Uh, house life in Wisconsin. Pretty good. Uh, just normal. I mean, it's it was very cold yesterday, uh, but then it got it, it became really sunny afterwards. Uh, so, yeah. But actually, Leila, I have a question for you. This is a Spanish-related question. <laughs> so, if we say cambio de idiomas, and the difference between cambio and intercambio, is that just interchange and yes. exchange? Uh huh. Uh, intercambio is in, uh, interchange or exchange. I think um, it's better if uh, they say uh, intercambio idiomas instead of cambio. Yeah. Idiomas. We always yeah. say intercambio here. But I don't know who created uh, this. Maybe someone from Spain? Yeah, I was thinking that. Because I've, I've always heard it as intercambio. Like when students right. go from one country to another country, it's a program of intercambio, you know, yes. like an yeah, exchange right. program. Yeah, yeah, so it's interesting. OK, maybe some folks from Spain started this. Interesting. Yes, and if you are interested, uh, I, sorry, Isabel, I, I don't um, post the class. Uh -huh. I haven't posted the class yet. But if you are interested, I uh, I teach a uh, class on Sunday, uh, on Sunday at 10 p.m. My, 10 sorry a.m. my time. I don't know what what time is in Wisconsin now. Right now it's eight eight ten in the morning. Uh, I think you guys are one hour ahead of us, right? Yes, one hour ahead because here is nine ten. Yeah. And if you okay. are free, uh, you can join us. Yeah, that would be great actually because I know I know for conversational Spanish. Sometimes I, I still have some questions about things. Yeah, no, that would be great. You guys are awesome. We are yeah. studying a future simple because I, I think it's better to to study or to see first the simple tenses. Yeah. We we will uh, see the uh, how can I say the perfect tenses. Uh -huh. If you are uh, if your level are intermediate, maybe it's not for you. <laughs> Because yeah, uh, my beginners are a server has a, a intermediate level, but some people there um, are in the um, beginning level. So I always post a beginner class there. Beginner classes, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's awesome. It's awesome. You guys are doing some great, great, great work online with uh, different cultures. Because I know there's a great demand for Spanish. There's a great demand for English. Maybe French is also seeing some demand. Mm -hmm. um, and now yeah. she stopped uh, teaching uh, French classes, but uh, maybe next year mm -hmm. uh, she will do it again. Yeah, French is kind of tough, but mm -hmm. I guess any language, if you learn it, then it yeah. becomes easy. <laughs> but, yeah, makes sense. Awesome, awesome. Well, yeah, Servet, uh, thank you for sending me the link, and also Liliana, this is great. I'm going to see what I can do with it. Um, and we have a few more people. Uh, Tajeddin. Hoş geldiniz. Nasılsınız? Good to see you. Good to see you again, yeah. Welcome. And Laura, how's it going, Laura? Good to see you. Hi, hello. I'm fine. Good, good. Awesome, awesome. And Marcelo, how's it going? Todo beleza? Professor. Tudo, tudo beleza, professor. Como vai as coisas aí? Uh, everything is great. Muito bom. Okay, muito bom. okay, okay. Uh, yeah. I noticed that your Portuguese is getting 
Uh, better. Yeah, I only yeah. speak. I only speak two words. <laughs> yeah, two words. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't speak okay. anything else. Yeah. Great, 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 to, great to see you guys. Great, great to see you, see you guys. guys. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, Farhan, sorry to interrupt you today. Sure. Uh, yeah. We will have a Portuguese class at uh, 3 p.m. my time. 3 p.m. Uh, okay. In this group, if you are free, uh, join us. It's a, a beginner class. Beginners for Portuguese. Yeah. 3 p.m. I. That that would be 2 p.m. here. I'll see if I can make it. I, I might be out of the I house at the time. It's 3 p.m. But he he hasn't posted the time. But I, uh -huh. maybe between I I'm not sure if it's 3 or 4. Okay. If you are the group, maybe you can see the time there. Sure, sure, fantastic. No, this is great, guys. Thank you for the resources. Um, so. We are going to get started, guys. Uh, welcome, everybody. We're going to be looking today at reported speech. So reported speech is is treated with a little bit more uh, a little bit more importance because of the verbs that are involved and because we have direct and indirect types of reported speech, right? So sometimes, for example, uh, if you are talking about what somebody said and you are using their exact words, then we use then that's called the direct reported speech, right? And then if you are just rephrasing what they said, like if I said to somebody, you know, Liliana told me about her Sunday 10 a.m. class, that would be indirect because I didn't use what Liliana actually said. If I said, Liliana told me, hey Farhan, you should join our 9 a.m. or our 10 a.m. class on Sunday, and then I use quotation marks, right? Quotation marks are the biggest sign that you are talking about, that you're using directed speech, that you are directly quoting somebody, right, their exact words. So we're going to take a look at these different forms of reported speech. Um, almost always we use uh, verbs that relate to speaking. So, for example, the verbs that we will look at will include, for example, um, the verb say, the verb tell, the verb ask, right? He asked me, right? I told him. Um, we will also, there are some advanced verbs, like you can use verbs like exclaim. If somebody exclaims something, then they are, they say it with more emotion. Somebody exclaims something, it's not as basic as just somebody speaking, right? So speak is another one. Uh, exclaim, um, Perhaps question is also another verb, right? The verb question. I questioned him about his uh, activities, and he responded, right? So respond is another one of these verbs. It gets a little bit more respond, reply, right? These are all kind of a little bit more advanced verbs. That's really the context of reported speech. Looking at the verbs, being able to differentiate between direct and indirect types, and then, you know, Making sense of that is really the most important uh, lesson from this class, right? So be, I wanted to talk about, so th that's the first part of the class. The second part of the class, we are going to be looking at uh, a website that is called ISO Hunt. ISO, is a, ISO Hunt is a website that is very notorious for tons of pirated content. So they have movies, games, um, you know, Windows, Macintosh, every type of software that you can get uh, is going to be pirated or has been pirated on ISO Hunt. And this website is actually shutting down. So we're going to be talking a lot about pirated uh, technology and how it affects, you know, people and how people use it, right? So in order to get started, guys, let's think about what we know about pirated movies and pirated films and pirated content, right? How often do you hear of people buying or obtaining pirated stuff illegally? It's a big problem in the U.S. You know, um, you don't have to buy anything anymore. You can just get it online, right? So how often do you guys hear about that kind of stuff? I'd be interested to know. Uh, Servet, let's, let's start with you, please. I think in Turkey, in terms of games, uh -huh. uh, there are too few people who are actually going and buying the licensed games, computer games. Because those are children and their budget is limited. And obviously, uh, 
they are also expensive, so they prefer just getting the games online. Yeah. Or just maybe playing free to play games are more common actually. They are already free, they're not pirates. Exactly, exactly. And it's uh it's the same problem here. Tons of young people, a lot of teenagers do the same thing, right? It costs maybe fifty to sixty dollars for a single game. Yeah. Right? It's it's pretty expensive for somebody who doesn't have, you know, that that amount of money who's just, you know, like still a student or something like that. Uh Laura, what about you? What how is the situation with pirated content in Argentina? Movies and media and all those kinds of things. Mm, well, here there's I don't know if both the websites are from Argentina or from other parts of South America, but uh, there is a lot of websites where you can watch movies. Uh, they are I don't know once week that it was shown at the cinemas or before being shown at the cinemas, the movie are on the website. Mm. There are also a few sites we, where you can download books. Mm -hmm. Actually, <laughs> all my English books are from a website called englishtips.org. Uh -huh. And there's well, I don't know all all the books you can ask ask for are there, and you have the uh, other resources. Uh, so I I haven't bought a book of English. Congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> it's really good, right? I mean, well, it's really good for us because I guess the the you know students and folks like us we can access it. But in terms of maybe the industry or in terms of the legality, right, of such things, it's it's still questionable, right? Uh, but, I mean, the Internet is such an open place that I don't think people worry about what they're doing online sometimes, right? Uh, interesting. Thank you, Laura. Uh, what about Colombia, Liliana? Same situation? Uh, yes, similar. Yes, we, we can watch movies on some websites, and they are free for us. Yeah. And uh, young people can access to some uh, sites, uh, they are uh, they uh, can play games for free as well. Yeah. Um, and what else? Uh, to and uh, as well to buy uh, things or to download uh, books, as Laura said. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I I don't know if they are uh, the um, the game site, I don't know if they are legal or illegal. Probably so illegal. I, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because you know that I never play uh, online games. And, uh, but my, 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 some of my cousins uh, uh -huh. usually do it, and some friends. And um, what else? Mm, I think it's similar like in Argentina. Yeah, yeah, I think it's pretty common. What about Brazil, Marcelo? I think Marcelo may have gone to grab a drink of water. Sometimes he does that. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, Tajatin, what about in your experience? Is this something that's causing problems in Turkey? All this pirated content? Uh, yes, uh, Servet uh, talked about uh, Turkey. Uh -huh. And I agree with uh, him. Uh, it's very common. Uh, you can find. Uh, many games uh, in different uh, on, online, or you can find many games in uh, uh, shops, shopping uh, centers, shop uh, little shops. Uh, you can find many things, not uh, just only uh, computer games. Uh, you can find books, uh, e-books, or uh, MP3 songs. Also, uh, latest mobile phones, imitation of the Samsung uh, Galaxy 4, uh, Note 2. Uh, but uh, these are not legal. Uh, 
what you can find. Yeah, you know, I was in when I was in uh, Bursa, they my friends told me that the Zabita are supposed to catch these people, right? I think that's their job. Zabita is supposed to catch the uh, the <laughs> the fake merchandise, right? But we were always just joking that the Zabita were not doing anything. They were just drinking tea. That they're, yes. you know, <laughs> unfortunately. So yeah, for the rest of you guys, this this Zabita is a police force in Turkey mm -hmm. that is supposed to be controlling illegal content. If they see mm -hmm. somebody selling something illegal, they're supposed to stop. But they don't actually do anything. So so we were joking mm -hmm. that they just sit down. They just sit in a corner in a restaurant and they just drink tea. Mm -hmm. They don't let anything happen. So, but at least they're making an effort. At least Turkey it looks like. But it's I think uh, you mentioned that the original uh, original uh, copies uh, uh, are very uh, expensive. Yeah. And uh, the producers uh, should think uh, to reduce these uh, prices. Yeah. Uh, maybe. If you can uh, afford uh, to buy these uh, products, uh, we don't uh, want to buy uh, fake or uh, imitations. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think that's something that they are considering, you know, because they're losing so much money, billions of dollars probably yes. to all of this. There are uh, big differences between uh, original and uh, the uh, copies. Yeah. Fakes. Quality wise, yeah, quality, reliability, of course, yeah, the fake things are not that good. Uh, Marcelo, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Hey, Marcelo, so what's the situation in Brazil when it comes to like illegal movies that are online and like pirated movies and things like that? Piracy. Yeah. Uh, Is it common? I think yeah, it's common, it's, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's common. very common. Common, yeah. common. Uh -huh. I, I think it's common in everywhere. Yeah. You know? yeah. Every, every place. That's the idea yeah. I'm getting. <laughs> yeah, because I think the original one uh, is too expensive, you know, yeah. for people to to get it access uh, to 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 buy it, you know, because it's too expensive. So people look for cheaper one. So the cheaper one is, as you say, piracy. Yeah, definitely, so definitely. In my point of view, the real uh, uh, issue about this question uh, is the price. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. The price is the the, the problem because uh, the original is too expensive. Yeah, that seems to be something that's common then in a lot of places, right? I think the price yeah. makes it difficult make, makes it difficult for people to purchase. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. yeah, Ken, what about you? What about Japan? Japan's a rich country, a lot of uh, technology. What about piracy? Uh, kind of Japanese uh, company is pretty protective for that. They're very pro conservative, so. I'm not sure about underground side, but uh, as far as I know, I, I, don't, I don't know uh, such kind of piracy site. Maybe uh -huh. provider, interface, something like that. Uh -huh. And yeah, the, I, currently, uh, last year, government changed the law uh, for download kind of thing, so it's getting more stricter. And wow. So some argument happens, you know, it uh, that uh, new law might get rid of the Creative Commons as well, uh, as well as uh, you know illegal download kind of thing. But also the uh, Japanese society lost uh, the get a chance of Creative Commons share the Creative Commons. So that's kind, kind of, like, of uh, yeah. Kind of like Wikipedia has like the the Creative Commons license, right? Where they you can share content between different authors mm -hmm. if you without like getting into trouble. I think that's what Creative Commons license is. I'm not actually sure. Do you know what the... Yeah, kind of, the kind, yeah. Something right. like that probably, right? The license. And, uh, but maybe uh, my usage of this one might be wrong. Uh, kind of, I try to, you know, express, you know, uh, we have to share the good idea, uh, like English learning kind of thing. And Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yes. Yeah. There are things that we can share legally, and I think it's completely 100% legal to do certain things. But when they are creating 
content when they are distributing content for that's illegal, right? And if they're charging money for it, I think that's when it gets to be another level, right? Mm -hmm. Because I haven't heard anyone get arrested because you downloaded a movie. But if you are running the website that allows millions to download movies and you are also, you know, asking for money, that that's a big problem. Like, yeah. Mm. Good God, Ken, yeah, is that the case over there too, or...? Yeah, so, so uh, not so many, maybe one word, maybe several people are arrested, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I saw that on the newspaper, so. And they try to go for the big dogs, as we say in English. Mm. They try to go yeah. for, like, the head, the head guy in that company. Mm. They destroy him, they take all his money, and then these other websites close down. So, like, ISO Hunt, I think, is, is facing a similar problem because there was a website called Mega Upload. I don't know if you guys know about this website, but this website was closed down like last year the, the owner lived in like he lived in a castle in New Zealand he built like a billion dollar house and he was living in his castle like a king the police came to his house one day and they had they had been observing his activities for like two years then one day they just said okay time to you know time to take you to jail so when he fell, all the other websites, a lot of the websites, their owners started to panic, you know. So sometimes that's how that's how these people work. Um, interesting. Uh, in India, they have stores that are you you think they are professional stores, but everything inside is pirated. Every single thing inside is pirated. Mm-hmm. You if you if you open the case, the case looks real, like it's a plastic case. It has a very nice cover like a brand new movie from the US, right? Before it's released in the US, it's already available in India. Mm-hmm. You know? So when it comes to pirate, pirated stuff, I think India is high on the list of countries that have become very creative, you know? <laughs> so it's crazy. I mean, I thought the store was real, right? So I walk in and I talk to the guy and the guy's like, uh, no, it's not real, but don't tell people that. Just, you know. Buy stuff and go, you know, like don't don't ask questions. So I said, okay, I'm not gonna ask questions. But they did a very very nice job um, with with all the pirated stuff. So looking at reported speech, guys, right? We kind of used reported speech when we were having this conversation. Direct is when we are talking about something that someone actually said, right? And indirect is when we are just paraphrasing, when we are rephrasing what somebody else said, right? In more you know in more general terms. Now, President Obama said we will be able to, President Obama said the economy will recover, right? But then if I say something more direct, and the president said, you know, I am not a crook. That's what Nixon said. Anyway, so I am not a crook, right? That would be something where we use quotation marks, and that would be direct. So and the president said, you know, I am not a crook, right? Direct. Uh, Obama said we will have peace. That is indirect, right? So really, using these verbs and using quotation marks, those are the only principal differences. And then, when we are talking about, for example, when we are talking about different things that people say, we might use that and we might not use that, depending on the situation, right? So you can say, for example, my brother told me that we need to prepare for our trip, right? You could also say, my brother told me to prepare for the trip, right? My brother told me to prepare for the trip. So, my brother told me that we should prepare, or my brother told me to prepare, right? Multiple ways to say the same thing. You're using reported speech. Sometimes you can use that. Sometimes you can exclude that from from the conversation, right? So, it's not something that we have to use. Um, It's used more in formal speech. So if you read, for example, a newspaper article or something that's a little bit more formal, uh, maybe like in court documents. Court documents are probably the most important documents for reported speech, right? Because you you are probably using a lot of directed speech. And then the criminal said to the victim, blah, 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 right? He told him that he would be killed, right? Things like that. Uh, We use a lot more of the formal uh, vocabulary when it comes to something like a law document um, or, a, or a legal document, I should say. And then we also have something called the backshift, right? 
So the back shift is when we are talking about, depends on the context in which you're describing something, right? If you're talking about somebody who still feels the same way that they did when they told you about it, then you can keep the present tense, right? Let's say Servet is a very happy guy, right? He loves what, he, what he's doing and he really enjoys what he's doing. And he tells me, hey, Farhan, I feel so happy today, right? Then I can tell Liliana, hey, Liliana, Servet told me he feels really happy today, right? It's still recent. It's still recent enough that I can keep the present tense in the present tense form, right? It just happened. He told me five minutes ago, I'm telling, you know, Liliana right now, right? But other times when we are talking about recorded speech, we do go back one tense, right? Normally we shift back one tense because we can, we can be talking about people in terms of things that they did that are no longer the case, right? Or things that they said in the past. When you say something, that's done, right? It's an action that happens in the past. So it's very possible to also use the past tense when we're using the reported, uh, reported uh, speech, right? So we can say, for example, um, Frank, you know, Frank told me that he was tired yesterday, right? Probably no longer tired, right? Happened yesterday, it's still in the past, right? So he was tired yesterday, right? Frank told me that he was tired yesterday. Um, let's say you're speaking on the phone with somebody, right? And it's a continuous thing. Maybe somebody calls you on a cell phone and somebody calls you at home, right? Uh, you know, my mother is telling me to hang up so I can talk to you. Right, whatever the case might be, you can use the present continuous. You know, my mother is telling me to do something. Right, you can use the past, which is called the back shift, or you can use the present tense depending on the situation. Right. Um, any questions, guys, about that initial kind of overview of reported speech? Does it make sense? No. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm going to spend one, like maybe two more minutes talking about the last part. I think you guys all get this, right? So I'm not going to ask for a lot of examples from each one of these types, but I, I want you guys to make sentences after, right? So uh, the very last thing I wanted to mention was when we are talking about things that are, when we are talking about people asking us questions, right? You can say things differently. You can you can ask things. You can make the phrases in in a number of different ways, right? Let's say Tajuddin asks me, you know, where do you live, right? And then I want to tell somebody else that Tajuddin asked me where I live, right? So I'm trying to relate a question, right? You can say it different ways. In English, sometimes we use the the phrase "wanted to know," right? Somebody wanted to know something. Right? So if Tajuddin asks me, hey Farhan, where do you live? I can tell, you know, I can tell Marcelo, hey Marcelo, Tajuddin wanted to know where I live. Right? He wanted to know something. So this is when we have backshift. Right? I'm making the, the present, or let's say Tajuddin asked me very recently, but I'm still saying wanted to know. Right? Because it was something that he, that he asked me. Right? Still in the past tense. So he wanted to know where I live. Right? That's another example. Um, let's say we are talking about what something happened to somebody else, and we, we observe it, right? We observe it in the street, right? Let's say uh, there, was a, there was a guy who was looking suspicious, and the police came up to him and said, you know, and told him to stop doing what he was doing, or they were asking him questions. They were interrogating him, right? So I can say, you know, uh, the that man was asked to uh, stop what he was doing, right? The police asked the man to stop what he was doing. That works. I could also say that man was asked, right? That man was asked to do something. So many different ways, guys, many different ways that we use reported speech. The last example that I wanted to mention was if we are talking about somebody that orders something or somebody that requests something in a polite way, right? We can say, we can use the verbs, we can use the verb tell, right? 
So someone tells someone to do something, right? That can be used when we are talking about requests. So let's say my mom asked my sister to, um, you know, uh, help her with dinner or whatever, right? So I could say my mother either asked my sister to help her or told my sister to help her with dinner, right? Many different ways. There are a ton of different ways that we can use these verbs. There's no one right way or one wrong way, right? But we have to be careful about the tense that we use, and we have to be careful about if the verb is actually making sense, right? So we, we can use all those different verbs, replied, asked, told, you know, said, exclaimed, explained, right? Tons of different verbs. So any questions, guys, about reported speech? Uh, yeah, go ahead. The, the man was asked to do something. Uh, it's when you reported uh, something like uh, happened just uh, in a few minutes. So, what is the structure of this uh, sentence? I I don't uh, I don't know how to do it. What was the what of the sentence? The, the, what man was the structure asked. To do something? Could yeah. you give me another example, please? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So if the man was asked to do something, meaning that, you know, somebody asked him to do something, right? Somebody else. It's kind of like the passive tense, right? I could say, or passive voice, right? I could say, you know, he asked him about his job, right? Marcelo asked Ken about his job, right? But I could say Ken was asked about his job, right? Mm -hmm. If I don't want to mention it was Marcelo, I can say Ken was asked about his job or somebody was told something right really depends on the situation because it's like sometimes it's it's better to not talk about who said it right when you're talking about maybe secret things or things that are private you don't want to mention who said what you just want to mention maybe one of the two people right so for example in this example with the police you know it's not a proud moment if you get stopped by the police right maybe somebody is in a difficult position so you know you could say the, the victim was, was um, I don't know, the victim was cornered, or that's not really spoken, but the victim was accosted by the criminals, right? What does accost mean? Accost is like kind of a very specific verb. It means to be, someone confronts you, right? Someone confronts you and someone, like maybe you're in a corner and somebody comes up to you and threatens you with something, right? So even the verb threaten, right? Threaten can be, it can be a verbal threat, right? I can tell somebody I'm going to hurt you or I'm going to, you know, do something to you. And that's a threat, right? So he was threatened. Sometimes we hear this in the news a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Because we talk about victims, victims, you know, the victim was threatened by the criminal, right? Mm -hmm. Or the victim was threatened by a group of six people, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. So it's a little bit, it's another creative kind of way of using reported speech to to mention something that happened in the past using some kind of passive voice. I would say this is passive voice, you know. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really a passive voice. Uh, very restricted. Yeah, I'm sorry, can I go ahead? I'm uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I oh. talked to myself. Sorry. Oh, you're talking to yourself. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. So, uh, I'm so sorry. Re reported speech with yourself. That's that's the next that's the next chapter, guys. Right? Uh, Ken Ken is saying I said to myself. No, I'm, just, uh, I'm just joking. Okay, that's when, when great. I, yeah. When I uh, say an order for some, like my mother or my mom uh, tell me not to uh, arrive home later. Yeah, or just late, right? My mom my mom told me not to arrive home late, so. That means, you know, you shouldn't come home after 9 p.m. or something like that, right? Or, or my mom told me not to arrive home later than 9 p.m. Or not to arrive home late. Either one, right? So, yeah, those are good examples, right? We can use tons of different examples. Um, let's go through, guys, and let's make one sentence each using reported speech, right? We have, like, a lot of people in the class today, which is great. So let's just make one sentence and then we'll jump into the article afterwards. So any of these things that I said, right, any of these things that we looked at, direct speech, indirect speech, different kinds of verbs, we can use the passive voice if we want to hide somebody's identity or make it seem less, you know, 
uh, less direct, those kinds of constructions, right? So let's start with Tajuddin this time on the right, and we'll go to the left. So Tajuddin, one example of a um, reported speech sentence, please. The teacher asked me when I finished my homework. Uh-huh. Fantastic. The teacher asked me when I finished my homework, right? Or the teacher, what's another way we can say this, Tajuddin? Remember when I said that there sometimes there's a, there's a phrase that we can use in English if somebody asks me something or somebody wants to know something? Direct question, direct speech? No, not going to be a direct speech, right? It can still be indirect. Indirect. Uh, I was asked uh, to when then uh, to finish my project. Yeah, I was asked uh, when I will finish my project. For example, right? When I, I was okay. So I was asked uh, when I will finish my project, right? So this one is, is future, right? The when I will finish, so it, it hasn't happened. You can also say, for example, uh, my teacher wanted to know when or if I did my homework or when I did my homework, right? My teacher wanted to know. So that wanted to know is also very useful if we're talking about people, right? That phrase, wanted to know. The policeman wanted to know why I was driving drunk, right? He could have asked you 700 questions, but you don't want to really spend your time saying all of that. You can say, the policeman wanted to know why I was driving drunk, something like that, right? So wanted to know is a very, very good phrase also. Great job, Tajuddin. Uh, Marcel, what about you, please? Uh, Farhan told me that he, is study, he was studying English. Fantastic. Uh, he was studying Portuguese, sorry. Fantastic, right? Uh, Farhan, Farhan told me that he was studying Portuguese, right? Yeah. So it's somebody, something that I said, past continuous, or maybe even present continuous, I am studying. Marcelo can easily say, he told me I was studying, right? Or that he told me that he was studying, right? Fantastic, fantastic. Liliana. Um, uh, my my friend um, uh, asked me uh, um, how, how long how long did I study uh, English? No, how long I studied? I have been studying English in college. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. So we don't need to use words like did. When we are asked, when we are using reported speech, right? Because the did is when we use when we, what we use when we ask the question itself, right? So, for example, your friend, if you were using directed direct speech, you could say, "My friend asked me, uh, did you study English?" Right? That's the direct speech. So, direct speech when we're actually rephrasing exactly what the person said, right? When we're using the exact words, then we can use words like "Did you study English last night?" or whatever, right? My friend asked me. Did you study English last night, right? If you're reporting it, you can just say, my friend asked me uh, if I studied English last night, or um, my when friend, I when I studied English last night. Yeah, my friend asked me when I, when I studied English last night, or my friend wanted to know, mm -hmm. my friend wanted to know. Uh, see, for me, when, it, when it's a yes or no question, I like using if. In the, in the phrase. We see that a, very commonly, or very, we see that a lot in English, right? So if it's a, if you were asked a yes or no question, or a situation that's pretty black and white, you can use if, right? My friend, or my mother wanted to know, my mother wanted to know uh, if I had uh, money for my lunch. Whatever, you know, like maybe my mother was, was Anxious, she didn't know if I had enough money for lunch. My mother wanted to know if I had money for my lunch, right? Um, it's a great way to connect the dots between something that is happening in the past or something that happened in the past that you're reporting, especially if it's a yes or no situation or kind of a, like a question situation. We use if a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So like Tajatin, your example was is very similar, right? You could have also said, you know, I was asked uh, if I did my homework, right, or if I finished my project, right, all of those different ways. 
really they all work, right? So there's there's no real construction example for for this uh, lesson. It's very very fluid. Many different options. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Laura, what about you? Mm. Uh, my mother asked me if I feed the dog. Yeah, my mother asked me if I. So would it be? Would you want it to be feed or would you want it to be fed? If in the past tense. Oh, fed. If I yeah. fed the dog. Yeah, that would be perfect, right? My mother asked me if I fed the dog, right? Uh, if you want to use feed, you can say it other ways, right? So you can say, my mother asked me to feed the dog, right? When we use to, it's the infinitive form of the verb, right? So we can say to feed, to do something. My, my father asked me to help him with the, uh, the barbecue. I don't know what the dads do. You know, they cook outside, right? My father asked me to do something, or my mother asked me you know, uh, or my mother told me to feed the dog or asked me to feed the dog. Um, my mother asked me if I had fed the dog, right? So these are all multiple examples of different ways of saying the same thing. Uh, Ken, what about you? Yeah. Uh, ask me, uh, when can I be online? Uh, uh -huh. Could I be, when can I be online? When can I be online, or when could I be online? Both of them yeah. make sense. Okay. Yeah, but are you asking yourself, Ken? Is that what you said? Or uh, I my asked... friend. Oh, uh, your my... friend asked you. My friend uh -huh. asked me. Yeah. Uh -huh. I thought. I thought for a second it was. Yeah, I think it said my friend or something else like that. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. My friend asked me when I can be online. Mm, yes. Right. Or what's another way? If you want to use wanted to know, how could we use wanted to know? Mm? If my... yeah. My friend asked. <laughs> hmm? Well, no, I'm saying if we want to use the phrase wanted to know in the same ah, example, right? How okay. could we use that? Yeah. Uh, my friend wanted to know when can I be online? Mm -hmm. My friend wanted to know when can I be online? When could I be online? Yes, yes. Okay. It sounds a little bit better. When could I be online? Or. You know, that's, it's a good question because we're using this asked again, right? Or, I'm sorry, we're using wanted to know. Uh, why, why, why could I, when could I, instead of when I could? When I could versus when could I. Okay, my friend asked me when could I be online or when I could be online. Both of them work, guys. Uh, I think I like when could I be online a little bit more because it just sounds more natural, but honestly, I don't have a good idea. I don't have a good reason for liking it besides just that one, uh, that one fact. Um, also, I wanted to say, so when is another one of those words that you know we we use we use often, right? When it comes to asking questions, like somebody asks us, "When can you do something?" Right? When we are reporting it, right? We have to be a little cautious because sometimes, sometimes we might be directly rephrasing the question in our reported speech when we don't want to, right? Did you mean to do it as a, as a directed speech or as a, as a direct reported speech, Ken, or was it, did you mean it as an indirect? My friend wanted to know, could I be on, when could I be online? Mm, I think that's... that's I didn't indirect. think about that. <laughs> yeah, but I would say it's more indirect though, right? That idea okay. it sounds a little yeah. more indirect. So yeah. if we say, if we want to make it indirect, then... I think what you have works, but if we say, my friend asked me when I could be online or when could I be online, right? Mm -hmm. When I could be online is better simply because when could I be online sounds too much like a question, mm -hmm. right? It almost sounds like the direct question that the person asked you, right? Like, mm -hmm. when can you be online? Your friend must have asked you, hey, Ken, when could you be online? When can you be online? Mm. Right, and if we rephrase that as in the reported speech, it sounds like we are making a direct statement when we are actually speaking in the indirect form. Mm. So switching the I and the could changes that a little bit, right? Mm. When I, my friend asked me when, when I could be online, right? Because he asked you, could you? You're saying I could. You're just switching the order, and it makes it a little bit more fluid when we when we listen to it in English, right? That's maybe why it was a little bit more natural to me, but 
both of them make sense. Uh, it's it's you know the the meaning is the same, but it's just that little bit of uh, that little um, idea of fluency or what how it sounds is a little bit different. Uh, and Serpent, last but not least, please. Yes, the toddler had been asked to say "mom" until he finally said that. Yeah, fantastic. The toddler had been asked to say "mom" until he finally, you know, said it, or until he finally said that. Right? Fantastic. So we're talking about a little kid, right? Great example. Great example. Any questions, guys, about reported speech? I know it's a, it's a dense lesson. Right, there. There's a lot of there are a lot of verbs and a lot of different ways you can say the same thing. So let me know if there's if you guys have any questions. No. Make sense so far? Yes. Uh, yes, but, but in general, uh, you when you report a question, you uh, first uh, try to put in the the sub the subject and and after that. The, the last example. Yeah, the, the could I and the I could, right? Um, yeah, you know, it depends. Like when I speak, many times I just use I use a lot of ifs and I use a lot of when, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I if somebody asked me a question, I would say, like Ken, your example. Honestly, I would say like if I was just speaking normally to somebody, I would say my friend wanted to know if I could be online, mm -hmm. right? My friend wanted to know if it, if it, if I could be online, if it was a possibility for me to be online, right? If I want to mention when, right, because that was actually the question, when can you be online, was your friend's question, then I could say my friend wanted to know when I could be online. Yeah, so I would make it I could because of that, that same thing, Liliana, right? Could I makes it sound like you're rephrasing the question directly, right? You could say it directly. You could say my friend wanted to know or my friend asked me, when can you be online, mm -hmm. right? That's a direct, absolutely no problems. But in making it indirect, then I like to switch it because then it takes the focus away from the question and makes it more reported. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe that's, it's, it's, it's a slight thing, though. It's a very small thing. I don't think it's that big a deal, but sometimes we do run across these examples, right? So you say my friend wanted to know when uh, I can be online. Yeah. When you report it. Yeah, when I can be online. My friend asked when I could be online or when I can be online, right? Could sounds a little bit better when you say asked. Could sounds a little bit more natural because it's almost like a request, right? My friend asked me when I could be online. Yeah. And remember, can is less polite than could when we were looking at those, those lessons, right? So could is a little bit more, I guess, it sounds a little bit nicer mm -hmm. in that yeah. sense, right? Yeah, great questions, guys. So we only have a couple minutes. I do have time. Like, I don't have a class right after this. So you guys are free to stay as long as you want, but you guys might have to leave also, so I completely understand. Let's see how much of this we can actually get through. And then if it's uh, – I'm going to stay longer than four minutes from now. So if you guys want to hang around, more than welcome to, right? Uh, so let's take a look at this article. It's a BBC article. We're focusing once again on this website called ISO Hunt, right? And what is going on with piracy? We'll see what they say about the situation, right? So let's take a look, guys. Um, piracy site ISO Hunt to shut down and pay $110 million. ISO Hunt, a popular website offering bit torrents of mostly pirated material, right? Torrents are one of these formats in which you can get it, like everything online. Uh, is to shut down after or following a court settlement, right? The site's owner, Canadian Gary Fung, has agreed to pay $110 million to the Motion Picture Association of America, MPAA. MPAA Chairman Chris Dodd said the move was... So see, once again, this is direct, indirect speech, right? Indirect with a mix of direct. We have quotes too, right? Said the move was a major step forward for legitimate commerce online. In a blog post, Mr. Fung said, it's sad to see my baby go, right? This website was his baby, so this guy is sad to see his baby go. The site is currently still online but will soon be shut. It is one of the most popular sites of its kind on the Internet, right? A group of companies, including Disney, Paramount, and 20th Century Fox, 
accused the site of willfully infringing copyright by listing millions of popular movies and TV programs in a court battle that has lasted more than seven years. So they took them, they took him to court seven years ago. It took seven years to resolve the case. Now Mr. Fung has agreed to settle. He added, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. Ten and a half years of ISO hunt has been a long journey by any business definition and forever in internet startup time. It started as a programming hobby in my university days that has become so, so much more. Court documents acknowledge that it is unlikely that Mr. Fang's company would pay $110 million and that the M MPAA would probably receive between $2 million and $4 million. Degree of separation. Like a similar site, the Pirate Bay, right? This is another one of these torrent websites that has been blocked in the UK by a court order. ISO Hunt did not host pirated material itself. It instead acted as a directory of sources from which to download illegal files. According to court documents, Mr. Fung's defense hinged on this degree of separation and argued that it was the users of ISO Hunt responsible for distributing pirated material and not ISO Hunt, right? So what's cool about this website is the website itself just has links to the to the illegal information. He doesn't actually put anything illegal himself, right? But the California court disagreed, right? It sends a strong message that those who build businesses around encouraging, enabling, and helping others to commit copyright infringement are themselves infringers and will be held accountable for their illegal actions. So the court didn't care. The court said, no, ISO Hunt is as responsible as the people that were actually sharing that information, right? And then the rest of the stuff is just more information on, on his actual website and what his background is. But this guy started this website in college, right? He didn't even care. He had a million dollar business and he just started to started to make this his what he, what he liked to do, right? Um, was this a fair thing to do, guys, to shut down this website? What do you guys think about it about about the story? Yeah, I think it's hard. It's difficult. I think uh, it's uh, uh, it requires uh, a re retaliatory measures against the purest piracy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's very difficult to the government to control the issue of piracy. You know, people will still keep buying pirate stuff because the original one is too this is still too expensive. So they are gonna find the other ways to. To, to to buy it to 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 make to make to make it, mm -hmm. you know, to get this this kind of uh, um, uh, illegal things, illegal things. Yeah, software, movies, like all kinds of this media, right? Yeah, yeah. I th yeah. And it's it's like you know the government is maybe fighting, fighting, it's it's fighting a battle that it can't win, right? Many people think that maybe that's the case, right? They're fighting a battle that they can't really win, uh, or they're fighting a war that they can't really win, because the internet is so open, right? And there's so many of these websites. Um, Taj, then see you later. Thanks for joining. Uh, so, yeah, Liliana and Ken, what do you guys think about this? I mean, it's just one website that's shut down, right? Will this stop the piracy? Will it do anything to stop anything, or is it just insignificant almost? What do you guys think? Maybe similar mail site might be up here. Yeah, right. You close it and then something else pops up, right? Who knows, right? It it could take like how long does it take to just take information from maybe one place and make it? Yeah. The, if the price is the problem, maybe uh, the also not only the swing but also the you know companies uh, you know consider about such, such a price gap between countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, one uh, English teacher who uh, offered a free class in the past, he appeared on BBC Radio for his activities on the internet, and he said, uh, you know, th the reason why he offered free class on the internet because uh, even the small amount of money 
in Britain could be a huge amount of money in some countries. So they cannot pay the class. And in, in so, some uh, countries, uh, you know, uh, uh, people can speak English or people cannot s speak English, uh, you know, maybe people who cannot speak English, they cannot have a good opportunity to uh, for the job or a lot of you know, information. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe we consider about uh, such kind of uh, currency gap as well. As, yeah. Uh, I think it's important, right? Take everything into consideration when you're mm -hmm. offering a service or like these, these MPAA, you know, MPAA is a multi-billion dollar organization, right? I mean, they control all the movie studios, or they have all the movie Hollywood stuff, right? And yet, you know, they don't realize that if you're selling a Blu-ray disc for $25 in the U.S., $25 is what some people make in, a, in one week, mm. right? That's a week's salary in some countries. People make $100 a month in some countries, right? Mm. So it's very difficult, you know? It's very difficult when we look at the situation like that. Um, Sir, uh, and Liliana, what about you guys? Like, you know, I was surprised personally that he only has to pay two to four million dollars. Right? They sued him for a hundred and ten million and he probably only has to pay two to four million after ten and a half years of, you know, or after ten and a half years of this website being in existence and six years of this battle in, in court. Back and forth, it's not my fault. I only have the links. I don't have the actual videos, right? People are saying, no, you're responsible because you are acting as a channel, right, for this illegal activity. But, I mean, is that fair? If I put a link right now to a movie in the chat window, mm -hmm. right, should I get arrested because I, I gave you guys a, a movie link? Uh -huh. but, right? uh, yeah, but I agree with uh, Aka. Uh, sometimes uh, we, we can't... Uh, for example, here in Colombia, uh, some people uh, earn uh, minimum wage, so they they don't have the opportunity even to to watch uh, a movie uh, on weekends. Mm -hmm. So they vote or they can watch uh, free on internet in a website, or maybe they vote on uh, illegal uh, CDs. Mm -hmm. uh, CDs, yes. To illegal watch. CDs, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because it's cheaper. <laughs> so why they say oh they I, I think they, they say why we have to pay a lot of money for the same maybe the quality is um, is not the same but anyway they can watch uh, the movie yeah uh, illegal way so <laughs> but yeah for them it's cheaper exactly money talks right money talks money is the bottom line right and it's it's it doesn't matter if I'm watching it in a little bit grainy quality, not as good quality, but I mean, money is money. Like, I, I'm not going to spend a week of my earnings to, for one movie, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's the idea. It's, it's what's funny about the situation. And I, I think the United States, like, these movie companies just don't get it, right? They they feel that the the creative talent of all the actors and all the money that they spend to make the movie needs to be, you know, honored in the fact that the cost is, you know, higher than affordable, right? I mean, they believe they have a right to charge the amount that they charge. That's that's the bottom line for them, right? But people are creative, right? Like, now you have online streaming services. You have, like, iTunes sells songs for just $1 now. Yeah. And you can rent movies for just $3 from, like, Netflix or whatever, or actually Amazon does does a really good program where you can rent a movie for three dollars, keep it for like five days or twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. If it's HD, it's for twenty four hours. But if it's normal, regular standard definition, mm -hmm. then you can keep the movie for five days in your mm -hmm. in your in your inbox, right? For like three bucks, right? Uh -huh. I mean five five days if you really love the movie, watch it ten times. Yes. You know? Yeah. And then yeah. afterwards just give it back or whatever, you know? Yeah. For, here I can rent uh, one DVD uh, from fifty cent to one dollar nowadays. Mm -hmm. They price down, yeah, to compete with you know, the watching uh, a movie online. 
Yeah, these, mm -hmm. these different streaming services, right? So these streaming services, I can think of, hopefully I don't get arrested for this. I'm just, I'm not giving you guys websites. Uh, Netflix, uh, Amazon, uh, Netflix. Amazon Instant yeah. Video, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so these services maybe cannot be available in Japan. Japanese oh. companies are very conservative. They cannot agree mm. with starting these services, as far as wow. I know. I'm not sure, but, uh, uh, you know, other services, uh, music for music, uh, currently popular cloud music site. I forgot the name, mm -hmm. you know. Well, don't yeah. take it. I don't want you to get arrested. Don't yeah. take it. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a legal service in America oh, and legal. Europe. Um, uh -huh. And it's very famous service, but uh, uh, can, they cannot uh, start uh, business here. Wow, so Japan is Spotify, very conservative. Spotify. Oh, Spotify. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know about Spotify. I'll write it so I get arrested. Spotify. Yeah. It's it's very it's very uh, it's a great website. And you know, now there are other things like Pandora Radio. I'm sure you guys have heard of Pandora, so, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nowadays people are a bit, bit panicked because Japanese law changed, you know, just uh, yeah, like America. Just introduce or maybe a download uh, uh, you know. Uh, such kind of uh, movie or music, mm -hmm. if uh, you know uh, it is illegal, illegal, yeah, even if it's posted on the internet. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, last year changed, no changed. Wow. Changed. Yeah. Japan has a lot on the line then, because I think it's yeah, such very a conservative country. Japan is yeah. a very conservative country. It's a telecommunications giant. It's a it's a movie giant and electronics mm -hmm. giant, right? So they have they have to protect their you know their industry. But uh, too much protection, you know, uh, lost uh, get rid of the creativity because, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, Apple can create iTunes. Uh, you know, uh, they uh, maybe uh, catch that idea from from the illegal downloading a music site. And they create uh, the iTunes for for gain the profit, but the yeah. Japanese company couldn't couldn't do that. And the thing is, like, really, yeah. in, in addition to cost, guys, you guys are asking some, saying some great things about cost. It's also about convenience, right? right? I mean, because if I can just go online and sure, I'll pay five bucks, right? But I can go online. I want the movie, and I get it instantly. Right, like like I download it or I'm on Netflix. I as soon as I click buy, I have it. Instantly, right? I don't have to drive. I don't have to ask somebody yeah. to get it up, get it for me, or wait. Yeah, especially it is uh, very useful in you know, a country like America because it's, America is large. Yeah. So it's some, some huge. for Amer yeah, it's huge. <laughs> so sometimes yeah. it takes a very long time to go to the rental shop or yeah. That's Absolutely. Right. Yeah. For me, like my closest rental shop. Actually, it's not even a shop. Have you guys heard of a a service called Redbox? No. Redbox is a vending machine for movies and games, mm. right? It's the next, it's the new crazy thing in America, right? So every, like, corner, every pharmacy and uh, most corners, not every corner, but most corners of, like, if it's a large area with a large pharmacy, a large store, they have a Redbox vending machine in the lobby, for example. And you go in, you put in your two bucks, you get your movie, and you take it and you can return it at any red box in the country mm, right so nice. it's, it's really nice yeah so you get your movie I think it's actually kind of expensive right it's a it's like a dollar fifty a day right which streaming is actually cheaper because streaming it gives you maybe the standard definition movie for five days it's five bucks and for or I'm sorry for five days it's around three dollars but red box is about a dollar fifty a day for Blu-ray, and I think a dollar twenty-five for standard. So it's a little bit more expensive, but it's really convenient for kids, like for kids with parents, because they have such a great marketing scheme, right? I mean, imagine see if you have this huge red box. It's it's a red vending machine. The kids go up to it. They're like, "Mommy, mommy, I want this movie." <laughs> you know. Next thing you know, parents are spending like five bucks on different movies for their kids, right? Mm -hmm. So it's convenient, and if you don't return it on time, then you have to pay with a credit card. So they just add the amount, and you can return it whenever. If you keep it for a year, you'll probably pay four hundred dollars, right? <laughs> but you can keep it for a year if you want, right? Okay. It's, it's it's your incentive to return it, right? These kinds of things. Redbox is now starting their own streaming service. 
their own online service just like Netflix, right? So they really want to do everything. They want to have the red box for the, the, the vending machine. They also want to have the uh, something that you can just get online, red box, like you download, you keep for a few days, right? Let me show you guys what this red box thing is. So mm -hmm. there's a picture. That's a red box. And they, uh -huh. <laughs> it's just a vending machine for movies, you know? Uh -huh. So it's, it's, it's really cool, but it's, uh, and, but, you know, they're, they're making money. They're making a ton of money. Ah, yes, I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, the company company that made this. And just as I said, guys, you know, kids kids are the biggest market for Redbox, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. They they make so much money off of this. Like, the kids see the movies, Mommy, I want this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine, I'll get it for you, you know. Ah, that's a great idea. Yeah, this one this one specifically shows mm -hmm. this one specifically shows kids the and you know <laughs> I feel like the poor mom I had probably spending like seven <laughs> eight bucks on the movies right there. <laughs> Who knows? Kids are crazy. Yeah. So yes, uh Servet and Marcelo, what do you guys think? You guys have been kinda quiet. What's going on? Mm. Yeah. I don't know what is Servet. Servet yes. is there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> the topic has changed a lot, so yeah, I was. We were getting distracted. All all sorts of different things. Yeah. To, is is it one dollar to rent a booth in the red box? Rent a movie, yeah, for one night, it's one dollar. Yeah. Okay, but think, there is yeah. no there is no any guarantee that people will uh, give back the move here. You know what I mean? Yeah, in in Brazil, there's no guarantee. No, I, I don't know. I I'm asking you if that if oh uh, that is a guarantee. There well, is. A... You have to pay with a credit card, right? So in order to use this, you have to use a credit card. If they have your credit card number and they they track how many days you have the movie out, right? So if you don't give it back, ah, okay. they charge. Uh, they actually, charge for every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They charge for every ah, day. Okay, okay. I got you. I, I, I thought that you would pay with money. No, no, no. Credit card only. No. Yeah. 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 No, it's uh, real money, I think. Yeah. If you put in, if you put in five bucks, okay. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, walk away. <laughs> walk away. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure okay. people. I'm sure people try to steal too. I'm sure they tried to steal from Redbox. Like, people try to steal vending machines in this country. Uh -huh. Like, you yeah. know, they they want to steal <laughs> soda and Coca-Cola. Uh -huh. I, I think they'll definitely try to steal this stuff. You know, yeah. it's crazy. See you later. Yeah, you know, like it happens. It happens. Marcelo, I think you'll see it. You'll be in the U.S. in a few days, right? You'll see Redbox. They are so popular now. Airports have them. Pharmacies have them. I don't understand why airports have them because you're flying away. You're not coming back, right? I mean, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, everywhere you can find these red red boxes. Red boxes, yeah. But but uh, do do you can give it a uh, you can uh, can you give it back in other place? Yes, yes. Any red box. Yes. Any red box. Okay. Yeah. So you pick yeah. it up in California, you watch it for five days, you return it in New York, no problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. And they have online accounts so you can track, like, if you want to see, if you forgot how many days you were charged or, you know, whatever, you can make an account online, redbox.com, and just get everything that you need. I think they also started in Canada. Maybe they're, they're spreading to other countries now because people like the service. People like the convenience, yeah. I think. That you know, if there's one near your house, you can just get it from whenever, right? And then you can just return it anywhere, right? So, and let's see location. Rent uh, for uh, 40, uh, 24 hours. Yeah, every twenty four hours is I think a dollar, a dollar twenty five cents, something like that. Now they have video games too. Mm -hmm. So they have like the video games for Xbox and PlayStation, Nintendo, like all those popular games for people, for, for young children also, mm. right? Like when I went to the Redbox recently, guys, I didn't find a movie that I really wanted to watch, right? A lot of them are family movies, comedy movies, you know. They're working on their selection, I think, but they are also marketing to kids. I think that's their biggest thing. My yeah. nephew will be crazy because um, he loves to play uh, video games and he will travel to New York next week, so I will tell him. 
<laughs> yeah, tell them about Redbox. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's definitely going to find them in New York. I mean, they're, uh, my house is close to four red boxes. So just where I live, within walking distance, uh, there are none walking distance, but the closest one is a five-minute drive from where I am. Yeah, so it's pretty convenient, yeah. Yeah, so redbox.com, guys. Free ad for them. I hope they pay me some money. <laughs> I don't know, I know, I think, for instance, uh, if you want to, if you if you go there and you rent a lot of films uh-huh. using your credit card, uh, for instance, you take uh, uh, 15 moves and you pay by your credit card. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to take with the, if you want to keep these moves in your home, you just you just have to cancel your credit card. <laughs> so they, they 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 can't push uh, 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 cobra charge Sorry. anymore. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Maybe, I mean? maybe, but I mean that's you got to be very desperate. I mean, because <laughs> your credit card has so many other things, right? I mean, it depends how many credit cards you have. Honestly, most people in the U.S. have up to twenty credit cards. Oh. Wow. <laughs> okay. So I if, have one. I know. I, I think I have two or three maybe now, but I mean, it's because, you know, as long as you pay back the amount, it's fine to have. But people in this country, they pay the minimum amount, right? And they, they get interest charges like crazy. They're drowning in credit card debt. So they, they work only to pay their credit cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they work, of their credit they cards. work to pay that minimum payment. Huh? And they're killing themselves, right? I mean, like, you know, Basic financial security is, you know, you don't, you pay, you buy what you can. You don't buy. Yeah, stuff it's 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 yeah. a kind of uh, bow a bow of snow that is it's increasing and increasing mm-hmm. and increasing. Yeah, and you have to pay. Yeah, it's very difficult, guys. It's very difficult when it comes to credit cards and stuff like that. But yeah, I haven't heard of that one yet, Marcelo. Maybe you can be the first one. Just get like. 90 movies from red boxes go back to brazil cancel your credit card yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's it'll be good right i mean you can you can explore you can explore that option right maybe I mean, but it's it's a drastic thing it's a dra- it would be a drastic thing but people people are enjoying this this stuff you know i myself now i don't really my favorite is amazon instant video Mm-hmm. Very yeah. quick. Netflix is a little. Sometimes it freezes on me, and their their movies are not as as amazing. Amazon has a lot of documentaries, stuff that I like. You know, uh, st- like the there's a video about Brazil, a very nice video about Brazil. Uh, Discovery Atlas was the name. Discovery Atlas Brazil. They have one for China. They have one for mm-hmm. Italy. Right. Fantastic program. I learned so much about Brazil from that program. You know. Uh, Discovery Atlas. Oh, Discovery yeah. Atlas, Atlas Brazil. Yeah. Uh-huh. They took they took the 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 crew went to Manaus in the Amazonas. Then they went to Sao Paulo. They went to Rio. They went to many cities. And they they followed people. They followed a child. They followed a like a single mother. They followed a a pilot, like a professional pilot. You know, mm-hmm. normal Brazilians in their normal daily lives. Very very good. Video, fantastic video. Yeah. So stuff like this, I find on Amazon Instant Video. I don't find on Netflix or Redbox. So they still they have their they have their market, you know. Especially for kids, Redbox is doing great. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, go to that. No, no, I have to say that I I have to go and I Hi, yeah, me too. Your, your next class. <laughs> yeah, my next class is gonna be in 40 minutes. So yeah, we'll get we'll get started from there, but. Thank you guys for a great class. Okay. Uh, had a great okay. conversation. Yeah. No, thanks to you. Awesome. You. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Folks. You. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Obrigado a você, Marcelo. Obrigado a você. Obrigado. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> Ciao. 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 You know, you know, Sarah, if I start learning Turkish at the Turkish American Center here, yes. uh, maybe I can have a conversation with you. <laughs> yes. You know, we have a group on Facebook. I was also teaching the Turkish a few people as well uh-huh. teaching you can follow the group and yeah that would be that would be great join online class as well. what, what's the name of the group if you don't mind me asking it's called language exchange language exchange but i guess it is in spanish i guess 
Uh -huh. uh, the link, the link of the group, is in Spanish. I had to find it. Okay. Because there might be a few different language exchange groups on Facebook, probably. Oh, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, are you friends with me on Facebook, Servet? You might not be. But if you if you add me on Facebook, then we can communicate that way. If you find the link, that would be. Oh, okay, it's right here. Cambio de idiomas. Oh, okay. That's, this might be the best option for me then. That's awesome, Liliana. You know about it as well. That's great. Yes, yes. Uh, it's a good group. I like. But as seven, you won't teach uh, Turkish anymore, though. I, I'm not teaching for now. Uh, because lots of people have lots of different things to do. They are busy. One of them. Is People are, some of them are working, some of them are studying. Uh -huh. So yes, and, and it's the group. Christmas time now. Uh, mm -hmm. That's group, a, like. Yes, you can. I, hi, Farhan. I'm sorry for not saying hi to oh, you. Oh, no problem, Zoyana. How's it going? Good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> good to see you too. Yeah. Uh, how's life in Wisconsin? Pretty good. Uh, just normal. I mean, it's it was very cold yesterday, uh, but then it got it, it became really sunny afterwards. Uh, so, yeah. But actually, Leland, I have a question for you. This is a Spanish-related question. <laughs> so, if we say cambio de idiomas, and the difference between cambio and intercambio, is that just interchange and yes. exchange? Uh -huh. uh, intercambio is in, uh, interchange or exchange. I think um, it's better if uh, they say uh, intercambio idiomas instead of cambio. Yeah. Idiomas. We yeah. always say intercambio here. But I don't know who created uh, this. Maybe someone from Spain? Yeah, I was thinking that. Because I've, I've always heard it as intercambio. Like when students right. go from one country to another country, it's a program of intercambio, you know, yes. like an yeah, exchange right. program. Yeah, yeah, so it's interesting. OK, maybe it's some folks from Spain started this. Interesting. Yes, and if you are interested, uh, I, sorry, Isabel, I, I, I don't um, post the class. Uh -huh. I haven't posted the class yet. But if you are interested, I uh, I teach uh, class on Sunday, uh, on Sunday at 10 p.m. My, 10 sorry a.m. my time. I don't know what what time is in Wisconsin now. Right now it's eight eight ten in the morning. Uh, I think you guys are one hour ahead of us, right? Yes, one hour ahead because here is nine ten. Yeah. If you okay. are free, uh, you can join us. Yeah, that would be great actually because I know I know for conversational Spanish. Sometimes I, I still have some questions about things. Yeah, yeah. no, that would be great. You guys are awesome. We are yeah. studying a future simple because I, I think it's better to to study or to see first the simple tenses. Yeah. We we will uh, see the uh, how can I say the perfect tenses. Uh huh. But if you are uh, if your level are intermediate, maybe it's not for you. <laughs> Because yeah, uh, my beginners are a server has a, a intermediate level, but some people there um, are in the um, beginning level. So I always post a beginner class there. Beginner classes, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's awesome. It's awesome. You guys are doing some great, great, great work online with uh, different cultures because I know there's a great demand for Spanish, there's a great demand for English. Maybe French is also seeing some demand. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and now yeah. she stopped uh, teaching uh, French classes, but uh, maybe next year. Hey, how's it going? Sarah, Merhaba, nasılsınız? Merhaba, günaydın. Günaydın. How are you? 
You're good, uh huh. Great, great. Chokim, Chokim, Bendim, Teşekkürler. So, what have you done this morning? Can you tell it in Turkish? Ah, uh, no, unfortunately. My Turkish is too weak. I don't know any verbs, honestly. Uh, very, very few verbs. I can say, like, konuşuyorum and like, which is I speak, I think, right? I speak. Yeah. And then the other ones are mostly just questions. I can ask questions, like, ne zaman geliyor? <laughs> you know, like for a bus, otobus ne zaman geliyor? Uh, you know, we have you with dots and you without dots. Oh yeah, you without you with dots. dots yeah. are u, like autobus. If autobus. It without, if it was without dot, it would be autobus. Autobus. Evet, evet. Yeah, so I I was thinking of learning, you know, but I I don't have uh, time. T well, I have time actually, but honestly. Like I can make time. The time is not the excuse, but I just need a good teacher. Like I need a, somebody who's there's a Turkish American association here in my city because yes. Ch Chicago has a large uh, population of Turkish people, and we are only two hours from Chicago, so there are still a lot of Turkish people here, and they have classes, but I have to investigate like what times they teach, you know, things like that, mm -hmm. because. Uh, Really, if it's in my city, then I have no excuse. You know, I should be able to go and attend the classes. Yeah. Um, when I first heard Turkish, honestly, Servet, I didn't think it was that romantic sounding a language. I thought it was more a more um, serious language. But then, as I listened to songs, I started watching some old movies. Hababam uh, Sinifa. I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, super, it. super I funny, right? It. Yeah. Yeah. I can watch it one thousand times more, and I won't get bored. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, how about if it was like, I saw the application of the language in other ways, in other very creative ways, right? And I think after you, after you investigate the literature of a country or the, the, the comedy of a of a culture, you know, places like that, or things like that, that's when you begin to appreciate more. So definitely, it was, uh, those were some interesting things. And then I watched Muhteşem uh, Yüzyıl, some of the shows that are kind of popular now. Um, but I still, they don't make uh, the Muhteşem Yüzyıl with uh, English subtitles, as far as I can tell. They make them with German subtitles, but not English. So it was a little bit difficult for me. Um, yeah. And then Fatih Birdot Eliuch, Bindot Eliuch was also um, uh, a good movie. Just in terms of the historical stuff, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's overly it's overly dramatic. But what can we do? Right? Sometimes that's how movies are. So yeah, it's great. It's great. So I will let.